When we ask what something is, and then accept as an answer only what our conditioned mind understands, then we are cultivating an attitude called anthropism. Anthropism is the belief within the dominant belief system that the purpose of the universe is to create laws and principles that only third-dimensional science can comprehend. According to this perception, the universe by its nature is devoid of intention. It is a random occurrence. In this regard, the human is viewed as a happenstance effect of different atoms joined to create a molecular structure that randomly results in life. Furthermore, this random life just happened to evolve over billions of years. In this way, Consciousness is viewed as a complex infraelectronic effects of nerves and cells firing in the brain, caused by various types of proteins entering different cells. From this perspective, the purpose of life is based on human theories constructed to describe this meaningless universe. Because it has rejected the idea of God, galactic ordering dynamic, the most advanced form of scientific thought is known as Positivism. The positivist believes that all that is needed to know can be acquired through the five senses. This is the philosophy adhered to by scientists such as Stephen Hawking. Positivism says that the universe is knowable through the rational human mind. Through logic, scientific deduction and experimentation, the rational human mind can construct theories that the universe supposedly conforms to. This represents the highest form of evolution that has occurred in the universe. From this point of view, there is no need for God or the supernatural. Everything can be reduced to the positivist notions of the rational mind, functioning with logic and correct experimental laboratory methods. This is the highest belief of modern science. In actuality, the universe has no theories. Theories are the creations of speculative minds developed in the uncertainty. These types of minds attempt to arrive at certainty through the exercise of logic or reason. The universe is not a theoretical construct nor does it conform to any fabricated theories. The ancient Buddhist text says that Buddha has no theories. This is very much to the point, since neither reality nor the experience of reality is a theory. Virtually every modern scientific theory is flawed. From the cosmic science point of view, Logic and reason are merely sequences of annals firing in a particular binary series. Yes, no, I think, I don't think, maybe, maybe not. I think that's it, so I'll construct a theory. But the universe is not constructed on theory. Theories are purely human constructs. What makes the human think that it can know the nature of the cosmos or universe through a theory? Cosmic science is not a theory, but an initiation to vision. So the question is not only where are we in cosmic history, but also where are we in the cosmos. Even with the best telescopes, scientists cannot really tell where the center of the universe is. Therefore, it cannot be accurately gauged where we are in relation to that center. These perceptions may be accurate or may not be accurate, but we don't really know what we are seeing. For this reason, different theoretical constructs are created. For example, Hubble, for whom the telescope was named, saw through his telescope the spectroscopic red shift that seemed to indicate distant galaxies were moving faster and farther away. He then created the Hubble constant to gauge how fast galaxies are moving. This became a theoretical construct for astrophysicists to spend many years trying to see if this is true or not. Another astrophysicist, Fred Hoyle, 
claim that the universe is in a steady state, and always has been. Other physicists say no, the universe is not steady, but is moving this way or that way. Some physicists say the only way the Big Bang could occur is if there were some type of radiation way off in the universe. Then other physicists say, yeah, we found it. It is called steady-state radiation, and it indicates that the Big Bang occurred 13.7 billion years ago. But where, how, or what? What does this really tell you? Is it telling you that it sees to the edge of the universe? Is there such a thing? How do we know we are not just looking at the edge of our own perceptual field? Most modern scientists believe that human logical and deductive thinking represents the highest possibility of mind in the universe. From the point of view of cosmic science, this thinking only represents a particular stratum or layer of the universe. Cosmic science says there are more evolved states, and other places with evolved beings engaged in higher states of thinking or levels of mentation. American scientist and cosmic thinker Carl Sagan and Russian scientist Yosef Skolsky reasoned that the possibility existed of civilizations more advanced than ours. To them, this was a logical deduction documented in their collaborative effort, Intelligent Life in the Universe, 1978. In the SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence project, Sagan and Skolsky operated with the assumption that the cosmic life evolved numerous technological civilizations. They reasoned that if a civilization was more advanced, it must be based in technology. Sagan and Shklovsky worked out a curve to determine the lifespan of technological civilizations, which they thought might be a cause for other technological civilizations from other parts of the galaxy to communicate. Concluding that advanced civilizations most likely communicate through radial signals, the SETI project used large radio receivers in different places on the planet to see if they could pick up signals from outer space. Likewise, signals were devised from Earth and sent into space. This theory says the only way communication could occur in the cosmos is through advanced radio means that could send out signals to see if another civilization could pick it up, and send out other signals that would be intelligible. This thinking is similar to military officials who dismiss the idea of UFOs, saying that rockets can only travel so fast so there is no way a man or humanoid ship could come to our planet without it taking hundreds if not thousands of years and at that rate everyone would be dead by the time they got there therefore UFOs do not exist this state of mind assumes that other civilizations must be transmitting the development of rockets and satellites to visit different spaces in the universe it also assumes that other civilizations would develop radio instruments and try to send radial signals through the universe in hopes of making contact with advanced technological civilizations. We see how the human can only project its present state of consciousness and then gets arrogant about its projections as witnessed by thoughts like, we know how fast a rocket ship can go, therefore we could not get to another star so how could beings from another star get to us? This mindset rigidly believes that there is no thought more advanced than the American military or Russian astrophysicist, both enmeshed in a materialist paradigm. This point of limitation is dangerous because those who solidify their minds into these limited parameters without realizing the effect of one-dimensional thinking exclude more intelligent possibilities and spiritual attainment. The more this attitude prevails, the more the situation becomes aggravated, which is where we find ourselves today, dominated by the positivist science belief system. 
As the society and breakdown of civilization becomes more chaotic and violent, likewise the interpretation of what is seen in space becomes more chaotic and violent, hence chaos theory, and the violent universe, the latest cosmological catchword. The scientists say because humans have conquered space, they are ready to set up colonies on Mars and mine the asteroid belt. Not only that, but they are fully prepared to create war from space, using what are called rods of God, nuclear technology to destroy the Earth. We see that the same science that created modern global civilization is now destroying it.